Thank you, Phil. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, everyone. I'm Madonna and this is David and we're going to have a chat to you about family therapy, but why it's so important to treat the whole family when someone has a challenged or neurodiverse child in their family. <laughs> so I suppose from the naturopathic perspective, it's one of those things. Once again, this is a perfect world scenario, isn't it? Because, That's right. you know, because financially not everyone can do this. <laughs> well, mm. If, if I'm counselling, if I'm seeing um, somebody's kid, especially if they're under 16, um, I'm happy to see them with the parents. And so, or parent or parents or different combinations at different times. Yeah. Because, um, and if that's what's most comfortable for everybody. Yeah. Because um, counselling one or two people in the room or even sometimes I'll get a mum and a dad and the kid I'm treating and an older kid. Yeah. All sitting in. And that's okay. Yeah. In fact, it's quite beneficial because quite often you hear the way someone's feeling when you haven't asked them those questions, because quite often when parents are chatting to their kids about their challenges, it's in the midst of the turmoil. That's it's right. when brains aren't working well. Mm -hmm. So then to actually bring it up when everything's calmed down, it's almost like kids feel like they're being picked on, you know, because their brain's gone. I'm okay at the moment. Why are you talking to me about it now? They don't understand that that's the time, you know, to actually get in there and do some good. Right. Because well, you've got to reconnect to those parent kids all the time, mm -hmm. these poor little darlings with these inflamed brains. Well, well what happens is that if you take um, take a scenario like a, um, a kid with ADHD, so their symptoms are existing yeah. and they're, you know, there's emotional dysregulation usually or cognitive dysregulation. And so that happening in a family system reflects yeah. in the carers and the other siblings. Like that kid might get scapegoated. Yeah. The other kids might inhabit. So it's like they'll be called dumb when actually they've got a, an attention and uh, focus issue yeah and so working out all of the the way things move in the family system can be really helpful yeah, yeah. and I was chatting to Teddy funnily enough so my six-year-old grandson I was chatting to him about the way brain works under stress right. because I like chatting to him about these things and making him aware and I said well the best thing about working with your brain and making you more resilient mm -hmm. is that you cope better under stress and I said, and the best thing about working your body and making sure it's nice and strong is that your body works well under stress. So even as a little six-year-old, he was sort of getting that because then we started talking about people who were stressed. So uh, that was sort of interesting from a six-year-old perspective. Okay. What do you mean? And what's the um, doubt? So what do you mean? What are you going with with that, like the body stress? So for me, the more, well, because, you know, the issues are in your tissues. Right. So, you know, it's like, actually, I'll give an example about a stressful thing that was 100% connected to my neck. Mm -hmm. So going back when I worked from here, like going back 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years ago, we were looking at, actually, it was 2006, so 18 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, we were looking at buying another property so that we could build a big clinic in there. Didn't work, don't do it. Anyway, so basically uh, we had this big loan. I was supposed to be hearing from the bank by 5 o'clock in the afternoon. At that time I had a phone in here in the clinic and at about 10 to 5 in the afternoon I got a phone call from the bank and they said we didn't get the loan. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I was working with my client and they knew that I was going to get a phone call. But it was really interesting. So it was really interesting that... Uh, by the time I got another phone call a few minutes later, which I didn't know I was going to get, and they said, sorry, that wasn't you. Your loan has actually been approved. Really? So it was within minutes I got a second follow-up phone call. But I was on stage that night in a play. Mm -hmm. We were doing Fiddler on the Roof. And uh, and my neck was spasmed. It was spasmed within minutes of that phone call. Right. So literally I was on, you know, I was, I can't remember whether I was doing massage or kinesiology, but I, I had a client in here on the table and 10 minutes later I could not move my neck, right, okay. which is how quickly the brain and your body connect to stress. Because mm -hmm. what's the neck about? You know, the neck's about flexibility. You know, the neck is the highway to the brain. It's, you know, when you get inflammation, you know, where does it go? Yeah, and it took me six, part of the brain are down there. It took me six weeks to get over that neck issue, right. but minutes of stress. Mm -hmm. 
Like literally, it was less than five minutes I got a phone call back then. They said, oops. <laughs> And the so, next, yeah, so huge connection between your physical body and stress. so from stress, you can just put a part of your body out just because of the way you. Well, I think energetically, you know, how we've talked to, you know, in Kinesiology Foundations, you were my human on the table this year. Um, and basically, if your body goes into fight or flight, what's your body doing? Yeah. So energetically, your body is already doing a physical response, even though you're not physically doing that response. Okay. Yeah, so when your body goes into fight or flight, your body is reacting. That's what the, you know, with the scoliosis, curvature of the spine, that's the end result of a body being in fight or flight <laughs> for years on end. Right. And actually, you know, because you mentioned ADHD before, one of my gurus, uh, Dr. Carl Ferrari, who died about 15 years ago, he's one of the ones who developed NOT, Neural Organisational Technique. And because he was a chiropractor in the States, And he wanted people to, and he started doing some neurodevelopment stuff that they weren't allowed to do because, of course, you're not allowed to say you can cure anything. But he was treating kids with learning disabilities and ADHD. Mm -hmm. So what they did was so that the parents could get health fund rebates or the equivalent in America, so they could get health fund rebates for coming along to this talk about what he could help them with, with ADHD and dyslexia mm -hmm. and things like that, he gave them a spinal uh x-ray right and what they found was that more than 90 percent of these kids with adhd and dyslexia had a curvature of the spine mm -hmm. so once again there's a physical effect of having brain dysregulation right and it's that's interesting. showing up in the body's physical and, and in counseling there's more and more focus on somatic healing yes in the last especially the last 10 years there's been a lot of work with the vagus nerve and realizing that That you know, it's kept in the body. So kinesiology is a bit ahead of that. Yeah. Like um, because that's fairly recent. Like people like Peter Levine and Bethel van der Kolk, they've worked on a real somatic culture within mm -hmm. the counseling process. Uh, but kinesiology had already been working oh, look, with those things a long, a long time earlier. Well, even a little example there, one of the guys who developed, and I'm talking back 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago when kinesi was first, maybe in the 60s. I can't remember how long ago, but basically there was a guy who had a very good kinesiology chiropractic practice, and what he did was trained people to do a 14 muscle balance on them, mm -hmm. which means they're basically realigning all the meridians in the bottle and body and 14 big muscle structures, mm -hmm. you know, for the body. So, and one for each meridian. That works on tension, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So muscles will either be too tight. Yeah. which is too much energy or too relaxed and not enough energy, but it's all linked in with the meridian flows. Which is tension and... Yep. So if the meridians aren't flowing yes. around the body, then we get blockages and pain. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, the, and acupuncture, you know, so what acupuncture is doing is putting needles in to release the blocks right. through Physical these meridians. Version. Yep, mm. absolutely. So I think of kinesiology as acupuncture without the... needles because right. <laughs> i'm terrified of needles right, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah yeah thank you and uh so anyway this guy and it might have been bruce Jew, but i think it was someone else mm -hmm. so he had a chiropractic clinic and he trained all these people to do these 14 muscle balances on them and then they would come back into him and then he would recheck the 14 muscle balances and just thinking about the physical and the emotional connected what he found was that he would have to redo some stuff Because just say you came into my clinic and I said, okay, I want you to go over there and see Sarah. She's going to do a 14 muscle balance on. You've got no connection with Sarah. Mm -hmm. So you don't go in there and tell what's going on with your son and your wife and, you know, what's going on in your life and work and all sorts of stuff because you don't give a toss about Sarah. So then you'd come in to see me and I'd do a muscle balance on you. You tell me everything that's going on. So because he was the primary caregiver or the primary practitioner, he did not realise that that emotional connection to the practitioner allows people in deeper very quickly yeah. to get a, you know, so and this it's is called, why it's so important. The therapeutic bond. Yeah. I, so that therapeutic. therapeutic bond absolutely changes the way people's bodies work. And there's so much underlying research that stress exacerbates any symptoms. Yes. So if stress is reduced, symptoms reduce. in nearly every case, and especially anything that's emotional or psychological, something like ADHD, the example we gave before, stress makes it worse. Yes. Authoritarian parent makes it worse. Oh, my parent gosh. Makes it worse. Absolutely. Authoritarian or permissive, they both make it worse. Yeah. And so... Um, I had a kid with ODD. 
Mm. about 20 years ago and this poor kid and I felt so sorry for him because his mum was exhausted by him he was maybe 8 19 so oppositional defiance disorder and his mum every second word out of her mouth was f or c mm. at him mm -hmm. at him mm -hmm. not about his behavior but mm -hmm. very physically at him his dad was a cop mm. so between this mother and this father this poor kid he would be perfect with me absolutely spot on perfect the most gentle sweet adorable kid but with his parents and you know and I was thinking that we should really chat about that because the frequency in a household changes mm. you know the energy in the household changes depending on those connections with the parents right so then, there we've got so something like ADHD if it's like 10 percent of people it's roughly 10 it is a, it's been 10 percent for like 20 years and so yeah. and then it then it reduces as people get older because they get often get the way to manage their symptoms just naturally. We often choose a job that allows us to have our ADHD, and, you know. And that. In, that a, in a world that The point I'm trying to us. make is that in a family system, if you've got a kid who has got some stronger ADHD symptoms, the other thing about things like that is there's mild, medium and extreme. Yeah. And the people with extreme cases, I mean, it's like with anything that's extreme, bipolar, I've had friends with schizophrenia, bipolar. I mean, really, it's really intense for everyone around. And so when you've got a kid with ADHD, that will exacerbate those things in the parents. Yes. And it's kind of, in family counselling, we use this principle called circular causality, which basically means it's not really in anybody's fault. Yeah. Because a lot of the things, a lot of stuff around this stuff will get back to self-blame, like the kid's crazy, oh, the absolutely. parents are reacting. Nobody yeah. knows what they're doing. Everyone's acting out of impulse they're yeah. not intentionally swearing it they're just like so frustrated that's what's happening so if it's 10 percent, it looks more like 40 percent of the people like another 20 yeah. percent will be affected by it so it's really 30 percent are affected by yeah. something like adhd and then in family counseling you know working around that idea of um circular causality is that often a kid will come in with stress symptoms and this and that. Yeah. But they're in we learn, you know, but then you do some couples counseling with the or some related counseling with the parents, yeah. and then the thing goes down because it goes in a circular thing. And so sometimes the kid's behavior is an outcome of the couple problem. Yeah. But not always that. Sometimes the kid will have a problem. And it's not a couple problem, but the parents are reacting so much. Yes. Because it's so stressful, they've got to get the kid to school and the kid's screaming, throwing their clothes yeah. off. And, like, what they actually do, the ADHD kids, with especially the hyper one, I mean, what do you do? It drives the parents mad, the teachers mad, because it's a really difficult thing to deal with for yeah. most people with the skills that they have. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where family counselling comes in because you're teaching them the skills to, yeah. to de-escalate things. There's different ways of doing things. First, the first step is always like with ADHD. The first step is parenting, parenting yeah. education, because people don't even realize what it is. Yeah, because it looks like really bad behavior. Yeah, but that's not what's really going on. At and all. from a naturopathic perspective, the brain is inflamed. Mm. The brain is inflamed. It does not matter whether it's autism or ODD mm. or ADHD or dyslexia or dementia or Alzheimer's. The brain is inflamed. Now, the causes are many. Mm. The causes are many. Uh, and a lot of them are neurological. Well, there's neurological toxicity involved. And, always. There's, and there's different types too. Yes. There's and there's different types of ADHD. Yes. So, but that toxicity has to calm down. And even cortisol, which is a natural hormone that our adrenals make, it's toxic to the brain in long, in short terms. It's meant to shut down your logical and creative hemispheres of the brain mm -hmm. so that you can react, and so focus. that you can fight the tiger, the lion, the bear. But we don't have many lions and tigers and bears roaming. Mm. Although I did tell that story to a client once and he said that he was in a class in France one day and the local, the, the local zoo did have an outbreak. So a lion did go through their school one day and I thought, well, I won't be able to use that example with you anymore because he literally had the lion. But anyway, so, yeah, there's, yeah, so the seven types of ADHD. Uh, but I, I imagine there's still the same parental education required. There's still the same. Yeah, well, the psychoeducation in understanding what it is and yeah. because there's different variations, like, for example, um, because it's, it used to be ADHD, now they put the H in it, which is... Uh, ADD. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, now a lot of the kids without the hyper get missed out on. They do, because, absolutely. Because, they, you know, it's like they're what they call them dumb. They, but they're not dumb. They just yeah. can't focus evenly and they can't pay attention yeah. and bring it back. So, you know, there's all sorts of ways to help. Yeah. I was chatting in my kinesiology training yesterday about, um, you know, trauma around that two years old. And, you know, once again, if you have people don't think of it, and this is once again, it's not something for parents to feel guilty about, but if you have a kid, you know, so just say you've got a little, you know, three-year-old girl and another baby's born. What happens to the little three-year-old being the princess of the family? All of a sudden, mum's exhausted. Dad's not getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. The whole environment of the household changes. And it's not at all unusual for kids to regress when another sibling is born. That's right. True. Well, one thing we do in family counselling is externalising is a big thing. Because in that situation, you end up with there could be a lot of blame. Like, you yeah. know, what you were saying before with the really strong ADHD kid, the mum swearing, the dad's whatever. Yeah. It's like all of those things can be addressed. And so by externalising, people aren't the problem, the problem's the problem. Yeah. You separate the ADHD out of there and you treat it separately, then it's a problem yeah. that the whole family's got. And then you can unify everyone against the problem, not against yeah. each other. It's like, you know, I've got my client uh, who has her uh, lump on her throat, mm -hmm. you know, which was about six times bigger a few years ago, but we call it Nessie. Mm -hmm. You know, so we call it Nessie. So she's not owning it. You know, it's getting smaller all the time. She's working on it constantly. Mm -hmm. So oh, how's Nessie going? Oh, you know, Nessie's been a bit of a pain in the butt this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nessie's pretty good. I'm being a bit, you know, can eat and drink and, you know, not have much of an issue. Externalising so, you know, is really nice. It, yeah, it is. And, you know, I don't people know how are, many people are, times. People have the problem, the problem's the problem. Yeah, and the amount of times I've said that in 30 years where parents get tears in their eyes and, you know, when they they start to realise that, hey, you know, may, you know, people can't do more than they can do. People do the best they do with the knowledge they've got. Well, so we whether or not the we problem. We haven't had very good training in relationships. No, no. Like you see, you know, like. You see seminars with you know um, you know counselors getting the audience. How many people they get? How many people had good relationship training? Two people stand up, <laughs> and, and because the thing is, we yeah. didn't get all we learned is, but in our family system, so if something different happens, we don't know what to do. Yeah, absolutely. Something unpredictable. Hmm. So yeah, in a perfect world, I think treating the whole family is really important. Well, everyone's embedded in a family. We all come out of one. Yeah. And we've got patterns from those systems yeah. already in us. Yeah. That can somebody time be improved. Yeah, beautiful. Any final thoughts? Uh, just that all relationships can be improved. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Life is good. Life is good. Yes. Beautiful. Excellent. Love and light, everyone. Thank you. Bye.